Welcome to devmode.fm, a podcast dedicated to the tools, techniques, and technologies used in modern web development. I'm Andrew Welch from NY Studio 107. I'm Patrick Harrington from Mildly Geeky in Boston. I'm Jennifer Blumberg from Next Solutions in New York. I'm Jonathan Melville in Hotlanta. I'm Marian Nullivan in Portland, Oregon. Yeah, and with us today, we got a number of people on here. So we've got Paolo Elias. How are you doing, Paolo? Good. How are you guys doing? Good. And we got, and you have an extra special announcement, my understanding, that's going to go on a little bit later on today and then we have ransom roberson from venvio how you doing i'm doing well and we have the inevitable or inevitable or inevitable enviable something john morton from craft link list how you doing john good how you doing and did i get everybody i think oh, it's no inimitable. we have yeah, yeah it's inimitable you're right <laughs> we have an extra special guest on today we have you want a secret mystery caller do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself uh, hey everyone it's earl i I'm from the internet. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard of that. We have old time host Earl Johnston, who is back on the show. And he said that he could not resist because we had the topic was going to be the 2020 apocalypse year in review. Right. <laughs> You know, it, it makes sense. And this is sort of our little Christmas or holiday present for everybody. And if you want to give us a holiday present, put a review of us on iTunes. Either give us a rating or even better, write a little review, write about what you like, write about what you don't like, whatever. Anyway, let's get into it. A good year for whatever reason. Like, don't feel bad. You know, don't feel shamed by it. You can definitely talk about it. But Earl, why don't we start with you in terms of what has gone on with you? Because we haven't spoken with you in some time. You mentioned to me that you were doing some kind of weird combination thing that involved two things that don't really kind of mix together. <laughs> that you've been doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, so you know, I've just been like locked away in my apartment basically since I don't know March. I think. Uh, you know, I live I live in New York, not New York City. I live in Rochester. So you know, but we got hit pretty hard and. And so, you know, I've just been kind of taking like a kitchen sink approach to dealing with the pandemic. So, you know, the first thing, the obvious thing, I, I leaned into drinking quite a bit. Uh, you know, I, I was, I mean, they thankfully in New York, they qualified uh, liquor stores as essential businesses. So I could still make well, it, it is, out. Uh, it is pretty essential. But is that, does that help your immune system, drinking liquor? Is that something that, that boosts I, your immune system? I heard that like, getting a good night's sleep uh, is is part of a healthy immune system. So in that sense, uh -huh. potentially, uh, I'm, right. not, I'm not totally sure. Uh, uh, and I put, I, sometimes I, I make vodka tonics with lime. There's vitamin C in that. So that's probably not the worst. Um, you know, I, I, have, I have vague memories from college and, and back in the day when I was an interesting person. And I don't ever remember like those drunken sleeps. I never remember waking up feeling that great though. Yeah, you that's, know? yeah. Well, that's, so that leads me into the second part, uh, which is okay. basically like I, you know, that, that wasn't working in the way that I hoped that it would. Uh, <laughs> what, so, what, 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 so, what I, uh, well, I, you know, I, like you said, like you know the mornings the mornings were rough and i just uh you know i was taking an awful lot of depression naps and stuff so but anyway so i started i started working out a little bit more at home because you know all the gyms all the gyms were closed i was someone that went on a regular basis mostly for like mental health reasons right to like blow yeah. off steam and like do some lifting and stuff and so i bought some gymnastics rings which have been incredibly difficult but also really great and then started doing some running and then once it got cold i brought a treadmill because i realized i'm not going to run outside in the winter mm -hmm. like people are like oh it's good you can do it i'm like well yeah i could do it but I'm just going to, I'll point the treadmill out the window uh, and that'll be, that'll be my running outside for the, for the winter. Well, were you, you were mixing these two. So were you doing like a shot of gin and then I, you were doing, <laughs> yeah, no, I definitely, I, I definitely, it's not a good idea to run with a hangover. I'll just say, I'll, no, I'll, I'll say that. Not. So I, you Wait. know, there's been some, I've learned some important lessons this year, I guess is. is well, what I, have, I'm, I have so many questions here. If you're in an apartment, <laughs> I have, if you're in an apartment yeah. where do you put the gymnastic rings? Oh, so, well, thankfully I live in an old, an, industri the bed. an, an old industrial building. Um, uh, so I have like pretty tall ceilings and exposed like rafters and stuff so i hung them i hung them from the rafters and then i keep them tied up around like a support beam when i'm not using them uh, um okay. so yeah so it's not i mean i'm not doing like it, they're mostly just for like pull-ups and things like that i'm not doing actual like gymnastics routines because i'm still like that i'm still too out of shape for that but in terms of like i was trying to decide if i was gonna buy a pull-up bar and my friend was like get get rings and i was like okay yeah. and uh, and they were you know they're cheaper and it was kind of a pain in the ass to hang them without a without a ladder uh there was there was like a a, a rope a rope involved and like throwing it over a rafter and like it was a whole it was a whole ordeal but it's a pandemic i had nothing to do it was fine earl you can admit it earl you can admit that you hung these rings over the over your bed so they double as it's combination workout workout rings and love swing right is that what's going on yeah it, well it's yeah it's hopeful for the future 
right? Because it's a it's a pan, it's a pandemic. I'm alone in this apartment. I don't even you know it's just it's just me. Oh, <laughs> so, yeah, no, I, I mean, I don't. I had to Google exercise rings or gymnastic rings because first of all, my God, like as someone who's thought, oh, maybe rental income could be like, what do you did you clear this with your landlord or are you absolutely not? Oh my God, <laughs> no. Well, okay. So again, first of all, like it's it's an old industrial building, so the ra- the rafters that they're hanging from are like, uh-huh. I, I mean, enormous. They're I, I can't even gauge how they're probably one foot on each side. So it's not mm-hmm. like you know, it's it's supporting the roof of an old industrial building. I'm not my 220 pounds is not going to pull this thing down. <laughs> Okay. Can you imagine if you brought the whole building down? Though, somebody would <laughs> be dead, yeah. so we wouldn't yeah, have well, to worry about That's what I mean, exactly. See, that's where I'm at. If we're talking apocalyptic uh, stuff, then that's where I'm at. If the building comes down, they they can take it up with my mom, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's a, it's a good thing that we have this on record. So, like, if that building ends up yeah. mysteriously being demolished, we can be like, well, I think I know what happened. Easier for the core. The dev mode year end. <laughs> yeah. No, I think I, so. Okay. So, that's pretty interesting. Uh, Marion, how about yourself? What is your 2020 quarantining? apocalypse stuff been like like what's going on with you well it's been i'd say it's been very on brand so <laughs> okay <laughs> are there are the doomsday clocks going off or something and the doomsday on-brand? clocks going off no i so i went to the i had a very minor prescription that ran out of you know i needed to refill it and they wouldn't, wouldn't mm-hmm. refill it without i went to through the doctor and i'm like oh wow i guess i'll go through the doctor and i went through the doctor and i have a great primary care physician one of the slightly old school ones who still does breast exams and he says that's a lump oh no and so that was a lump. So then, you know, you go and get your lump evaluated and they take a little core sample and they send it off to be tested. And they and they say, well, we'll let you know in, in two to five business days whether it's a bad lump or not. And the next day I get this call. I say, that's a bad lump. I think what they do is that they, they look at them all very quickly to see if there's an obvious sign of cancer. And if there is, they call you right away. And if there's not an obvious sign of cancer, then they have to look harder because- But what's a good lump though? Well, there was no obvious sign of cancer. What's a good lump of benign lump but, but, uh, but what, you know yeah, uh, benign, yeah. well yeah, but i still wouldn't call it good necessarily you know a better one. Oh a yes be- a better yeah oh yes okay. oh yes right. no a benign lump right, so is definitely a good lump so what well you know you 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 uh get on the uh cancer slide you start finding doctors and getting phone calls from doctors and going through all the medical and this is during the pandemic oh yeah this is during the pandemic this was all right so everyone else is listening right now everyone else everyone else is listening and all the hosts that are on here that we're all prepared to bitch and complain about something or just like, okay, I guess I, 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 I guess I can't complain. I got cancer, but oh, you know, God. it's, it's, uh, it's not the worst of cancers. It's the kind, right. it's the kind where you get chemo first and surgery second. Yeah. And so I got the chemo first, which is, I mean, I have heard and seen horror stories of what chemo can be like. And I am yeah. happy to say that it is not always like that. It was at least super annoying. It depends on the type of cancer, right? It depends on the type of cancer. Yeah. It depends on how you react to the drugs and so on. And, and I apparently reacted kind of about ideally to the drugs and that it seems like they've done their thing on this lump, which was 2.8 centimeters and about halfway through the treatment, they had reason to measure it again. And they said, well, it's gone from 2.8 centimeters to 0.6 centimeters. So that's good. It's on its way to going the right way to nothing, which is what they're hoping for. Nice. Yeah. So did you, did you, here's the important thing, Marin. Did you name it? Have I named it? I did not yeah. name it. Ugh. But See, you know, no, I'm I could, such an idiot. If I had one, I would totally name it. I, <laughs> I, I am. It's not too late. We can name the lump. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> You should, you should name it Andrew. Andrew. Oh, sure. No. <laughs> name it something other than that. No, I mean, I, I think it's reasonable to call me a cancerous mass. I think that's totally fine. I don't, I, I, I hmm. <laughs> It's your wife's name for you, isn't it? It's like a little wordy, but that's what Polly called it. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. 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 So anyway, so so there's. So the, how are we doing though? We're doing pretty well. The you know the lump has has uh, shrunk very nicely. My you know I have this. There's this long list of chemo side effects, and I'll tell you my favorite weird chemo side effect is chemo. It's about killing the fast growing cells, and okay. so some of the fat. That's why all your hair falls out, which. Now I have no hair, um, but some of the fast growing cells are like the lining of your nose. So mm. my nose just sort of randomly starts dripping blood. Oh my God. That's like a horror movie. <laughs> brutal. Yeah, that's brutal. And I go, oh God damn it, another pillowcase. <laughs> oh, oh no. 
My God, it's like you're transported into the '70s and you're a cocaine addict or something. I don't know. I, I mean, I, I was not a cocaine addict in the '70s, so I can't. Well, neither was I, Mary. Can't really say. <laughs> <laughs> and then 2020 20 happened. <laughs> <laughs> for God's sake. We're all just, yeah, we're all just thinking about uh, Michelle Pfeiffer from Scarface. That's exactly what I was envisioning, you know? And he, yeah, totally. That's what I was envisioning. I'm thinking the so, girl from Stranger Things is what I'm thinking. Oh. Oh, okay. Hmm. Fair. So, Marion, it sounds like like you should totally get a t-shirt that says, I got cancer during a pandemic. Homeschool your damn kids or something like that. You know what I mean? like, people that are whining. I have, I have to about. say, I am very not in charity with people who are running around and going home for Christmas. Christmas and so on, because I have my surgery scheduled for mm. about two weeks after Christmas, January. Is this like the final, 13th. the final deal? Like you're, you're no, getting no, rid of the monkey? whole, the whole adventure goes on for an entire year. And then I get to be low grade anxious for the rest of my life. Oh God. But, yeah. uh, <laughs> but no. So in January I have going to have this surgery, which is not elective surgery. Right. It's urgent surgery, but mm -hmm. you know how it is that if the ICUs are all completely full and, and uh, you know, so are the corridors. They're going to look at me and my surgery and go, well, we could do mm. it now. We could, she wouldn't die necessarily if we waited a couple of weeks. So you are probably someone that is especially annoyed at all the mask holes out there, right? The people who are potentially causing you to not have a, a, a bed to be able to get this surgery that you probably need? Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, yeah. Yeah, people who are refusing to wear masks and also people who are eating in restaurants and, and mm -hmm. going home for Christmas. And, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm very envious of the people who get to go to their own, very own grocery stores and shop for their very own food. <laughs> How about you, Paulo? Do you have any uh, lumps in your breast to talk to us? Yeah, about? everybody should check like right now i'm, I'm, I'm doing it i'm actively I, checking yeah i'm, I'm actively checking I'm, I'm not i don't know no i just found two nipples um <laughs> jesus <laughs> not more than two though right just on one it's bad just I actually one. knew I actually knew a girl that had a superfluous nipple. Oh so she had an actual I swear to God, she had a nipple on her back. And it was an actual like that's what it was. It was Are you like sure it wasn't just like a weird no, shit mole? Yeah. I went through this whole thing with her too. This is not what it was. Apparently it was a superfluous nipple, and it's a thing that happens. It's a thing. Anyway, I'm sorry, Paulo. <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> so I have a question. How am I supposed to follow up uh, either of those sort of... Well, that's why, I, that's why I went to you next. Drinking so. with cancer. No, but seriously, everyone's situation is... Uh, what is it? What has it been like for you? What have been some of the challenges, some of the highs, some of the lows? Like, didn't you change jobs and stuff like that? And you, you know, what's going yeah, on? Yeah. So, man, this is crazy. Okay. So, yeah, 2020 has been kind of crazy. As I was burning out with one job, I was able to get a this really awesome job with PBS Kids in uh, you know February, just before you know everything, <laughs> all timing. that shit hit the fan. And you know, I didn't. This is the first time I've started a job. It was supposed to be a completely remote job, but we had plans to like the whole team was going to meet in person. And that didn't happen, of course. So it was the first time I started a job and worked at a job that I didn't get to really meet anyone in person except for Andy Berkowitz, who I met in Berlin two years ago. So anyways, that was interesting. Then we had a baby in May, which is really interesting during a pandemic. Well, your wife had a baby. And my you were my wife had a baby. I did not have a baby. Let, let's, be, let's be clear about, you know, who, who did the work here? All right. <laughs> Yes, I I did not do any of that work. So yeah, we had a baby and that it's been amazing. And also we have a three year old as well. So it's been equally amazing and Well no difficult. no 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 I'm not gonna let you lie to everyone who's listening, Paulo. I have done many video conferences with you with your your kids like coming in the door. It has not been amazing, right? It's been, it's no, been, it's been equal well, parts right? amazing and equal parts I want to kill myself sometimes. Right. But right. It's, that's sort of par for the course in twenty twenty. So you're sympathizing with animals that sometimes eat their young? I, yeah, I've never understood why people would do that. And then now I understand sometimes. Not the eating part, the, uh, you know, just getting away as much as possible. Anyways, and then, yeah, and then I sort of just randomly got a new job. <laughs> so I wanted to sort of announce officially that uh, I'm going to be head of corporate web development at Pinterest starting in January. So kind of a oh. whole sort of peaks and valleys of a whole year in, yeah, 10 months. <laughs> 
<laughs> wow. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's a, first of all, congratulations. It's an amazing position for you to be in over there. And uh, don't forget the little people, you know, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need all the little people. No, but no, it's been, uh, it's been pretty crazy. It was one of these things that they actually approached me in March after our first voice, after I started PBS and I wasn't really looking, but then they completely shut down hiring until November. And then mm. um, they just randomly reached out to me again to see if I was interested. And yeah, it just sort of happened. So it's kind of exciting. So you probably have had a mix of, yeah, I mean, it sounds like you've been pretty doing pretty well in terms of you've had jobs and you just got a new awesome job, but you've also had challenges in terms of your, your kids. <sighs> I'll just tell you from, from my perspective, kind of what Earl was talking about before, I think off air, but he was saying that, you know, we're web developers and we're, a lot of us are probably kind of used to working alone anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. But the difference is that you then can't go anywhere else. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like there's nowhere to go to blow off steam. It's all well and good if you're used to working on your own during the day, but then maybe you used to go out to a bar or you used to go to the YMCA or you used to do some kind of activity right. to get your mind off of it. Has anyone else run into that? How about you, Jennifer? You got any, any lumps you want to tell us about or what's, what's been going on with you? <laughs> during the pandemic? Uh, no lumps, just checking. Yep. No, we're good for now. Right. Yeah, no, I definitely appreciate the need to blow off steam because I feel like I've been in this tiny New York City apartment sitting in the same chair for the past nine months and haven't oh really moved. God. It's been a real bummer, the, the number of small businesses that have shut down, and including a yoga studio that I really like to go to. And I can't hot yoga, right? Yeah, but if you think about the biggest germ factory, it's got to be hot yoga because you're in a tiny <laughs> little box with sweaty people breathing it's a, heavily it's a petri dish <laughs> on it's a good day like i can't i can't imagine how they would have stayed open but it was that was my release like i you know when you sit and you program all day and you need to do something even if you're in a that's tiny how apartment I heard that's how you know? COVID was developed jennifer oh yeah it probably it, was in like the monkey yoga was doing hot yoga somewhere and they just like it was this weird transmission thing that's in a monkey I, with a I can believe it <laughs> i mean it's i never thought about how disgusting it was and, and then I, and then i was like well you know what i I'd, I'd still go back yeah. <laughs> because I because I miss it. Especially if you sit all day, you sit at a desk oh, yeah. and, and you're in a small part. You, you need to get out and blow off steam. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm probably just doing what what everyone's doing, and just everything is going online if it's if it's at all possible. So you know you get a workout app, and mm. I got a friend who is now obsessed with Peloton. Mm -hmm. So you know their stock definitely went up. But but yeah, I think I think isn't that the company that the, the guy was like buying it for the wife to yes. like oh, get the, her in the shape? Notorious Ad. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, gosh, yeah. <laughs> God, that was a year ago. <laughs> yeah, dystopian then, ad. Yeah, then, didn't you have yeah. some crazy situation where you had a? I, I, if you don't want to go into it, that's fine. But didn't you have someone that you was around you that ended up getting COVID or oh, something like that? It, no, so my, my roommate passed away in March, but it, it actually wasn't. She didn't have COVID. She had a stroke, mm. and oh, we she wouldn't let us take her to the hospital right away because she was worried about getting COVID. So oh. we stupidly and sort of PSA to everyone if you see any of these symptoms take them to the hospital COVID be damned but yeah so she by the time we got her to the hospital <clears throat> they operated on her and she ended up passing away the next day um oh my God, so goodness. Yeah, man, this podcast got real heavy all of a sudden. Mm, yeah. <laughs> First Marion and, and then this. But yeah, you know, she it was, it was completely painless and tested negative for, for COVID. So yeah, so it was a bit of a, a shock to the system. And, and, and at the time, it was sort of in New York. It was around the time when people were freaking out that hospital ship was coming in and everyone was sort of, what do we, what do, we do with ourselves? We shut down the schools, everyone. Yeah. So it was this time of uncertainty and... Um, I, I actually think the toughest part, which is what everyone is going through, is just the lack of ability to be around other people. I'm sure we're all a little bit introverted, given the professions that we chose to be in. But even so, like, you know, we like to be working in our cave for eight hours a day. But it's also there is some need for human contact. And I think that's been the hardest part for the last few months is mm -hmm. being, you know, talking to people on Google Meet or Zoom, but you don't actually being in the same room as other people. And so if you're going through a crisis, you don't you, know, you don't get to have a dinner with friends to talk about it or or things like that. So I think that that's probably been the the thing that digital technology hasn't 
solved yet and maybe even made worse because you you go on Zoom and you're getting a simulacrum of what you're yeah. really needing, but you don't actually get it. It's like the Truman Show or whatever. And, and also, if you spent all day on stupid Zoom meetings, like the last thing you want to do is then Zoom with a friend. You know what I mean? It's like, exactly. oh, God, it's not, not fun. I mean, from my perspective, not a whole lot changed in terms of working from home. Like, I'm comfortable with that. I've done that for pretty much my entire life. Even when I was running a company, I would do a decent amount of work from home. So that's not an issue. The biggest thing for me, and I'm interested, I know that Patrick and Jonathan are in a similar situation with kids, but the biggest thing for me is that our kids are only going to school. So one kid is only going to school two days a week and the other three days he's at home. And the other kid is going to school for like, literally, I think he's in school for an hour. Like he gets home two hours after I drop him off. So he's five days a week, but I have to get up super early to get him to school so he can go there and be back home two hours later. So the biggest drain and the the hardest thing for me has been a combination of having to do my job and also do childcare Mm -hmm. in terms of taking care of the kids when they're home. And, you know, they're old enough. They're 10 and 12 now. So that, you know, it's not like I'm changing diapers, but they do need to be entertained. And it's difficult to to focus a little bit when you're, you're trying to do that. And then the other bigger part of it is that mentoring the kids in terms of you really, at least I have become a part-time teacher. And I've realized that I would make a terrible teacher, (laughs) (laughs) but I've become a part-time teacher and I've become a part-time daycare provider while also trying to work during the day. And all three of those things are really full-time jobs. And and that to me has been the hardest thing. Like I have been more tired during the, the pandemic, primarily because of this stuff added to my plate, taking care of the kids. And another thing, because they are not having a PE class, I lift weights with them four times a week. So we have like a gym class that at, that lasts like usually about an hour, hour and a half. But that's, at least for me, that's been the biggest burden. And it's, you know, especially compared to what Marion and Jen have had to deal with. It's it's nothing, but, you know, it's my personal story. But you, so Jonathan and Paulo and also Patrick, or actually, let's get Patrick in here first. Have you experienced anything like this or what's going on with you? Yeah, I have some notes here. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, as you said, you know, Marion, I'm sorry, I hadn't known about this before. And Jen, for your uh, roommate, like nothing to make you feel like... Wow. You know, kind of count your blessings and count your lucky stars when you heard about things. And I'm sorry for both of that. You know, because everything I'm like, oh, here's my parenting in a pandemic section. And my, oh, I've, my weight has been yo-yoing. That's been f- tough. Like, oh, yeah. God. Parenting Don't in a pandemic. too bad for Marion. Yeah. She'll still kick your ass. Sounds <laughs> terrible. <laughs> it is. I mean, we've been, you know, it's trying to get work done. I've, I've been working from home for years now, but now everyone is working in my home. And mm. um, yeah, trying to adjust to that. I mean, my wife's been adjusting to being at home and having to be on Zoom all day. Luckily, I have been pretty fortunate not to be stuck on Zoom, just working for myself. But yeah, trying to get work done and then also making sure our kids both are, you know, not destroying the house. My kids are seven and four. You know, Massachusetts was one of the first that got hit really hard. So for a while, we were in a quote unquote germ pod with a couple neighbors of like sending our kids to each other's houses. And not all kids are an equal watch. And some of them are really difficult. And also just trying to make sure that the stress of what we're all going through is not affecting my kids too much. My daughter is just a very sensitive kid and making sure that we're kind of shielding her from it and just trying to make sure that, yeah, this all the stress of what's going on isn't affecting them too much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's been a tough year, you know, not seeing family nearly as much as I would like to. And when we are, it's usually outside, you know, the summer changed a little bit, but now it's really back really to where we were back in March and April. Yeah, business-wise, I've been very fortunate. I've had ongoing work with some great clients. Yeah, kind of, you know, Earl also fortified the home, got a treadmill, did not put in any, uh, what do you call them, love swings or whatever it is you're using for <laughs> <laughs> yep. Love rings. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jenny, you need to listen to uh, Earl and just, I don't know if you pay for utilities, but it, what Earl would do is just jack that heat up in your apartment and, you know, just be the, the tenant that Earl is. Yeah, that's absolutely, yeah, my life is hot yoga. No, yeah. no. Yeah. Yeah. So how about you? How about you, Jonathan? You're in a similar situation. You got a, a number of kids at home. Have you what what has it been like for you dealing with the whole apocalypse 2020 situation? Like what's going on? It was more difficult for me. And again, difficult is relative, of course, given this the stories that we've heard. So I'm I've been more fortunate in that regard that my difficulty hasn't been too terrible. But at the start of the year, my kids weren't going to school. So it was um we had the problem of juggling who's gonna watch the kids while one parent mm-hmm. tries to get work done, that kind of deal. But 
other than that, it's been more personal stuff other than than business stuff. Business has actually been pretty pretty good this year. It's been more things like you know we we hadn't seen my grandmother in a year, mm, so she's yeah. been she lives in a retirement community and she's a big part of our life. She's a big part of our family, and so we've kind of missed out on birthdays and holidays and all everything else this year. And we've been able to take the kids over there and look at her through a window and wave, but it's just kind of like family stuff like that more than, than business stuff. It's kind of been business as usual for me, but the pandemic of course creeps into every aspect of your life. So I'm grateful for the, the work was still there. I've been busy this year, but it's just kind of been a general drag as it has been on everyone. Have you had fewer hours to work though? Yes. Like during the day? Just because, yes. Because I've had. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. Like my, my schedule is I, I, I get up in the morning, I get the kids ready. I, I drive the kids to school in the morning. They take the bus in the afternoon, but I drive them in in the morning because it, it ends up just, we, we would have to get up like almost an hour earlier yeah. to put them on the bus. I'm like, no, that's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. So, so I get up, I take them and then I've got an hour and a half to two hours to try to do something. Sometimes I take a nap, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then I got to bring the one kid home. I keep him in my barn where I work until he finishes his, his homework that he comes home with because he found that he just doesn't do it unless we kind of lock him up and, and make him do it. And I can't get a whole lot done during that time because, you know, daddy, how do I do this? Or how do I do that? Yeah. Or, you, yeah. you know, so that's why you have that yeah. cage in the. <laughs> that's what the cage is for. Yeah. And, and the cattle prod, right? Well, I'm not, and, and, and kind of similar in that you have like, you're working from home, but you do have a space. So like yes. you're going to the barn. I, I am have an office that's not in my house, but with the kids being there all the time, that creates less time for my wife. So I'm not able to be gone as much because right. we kind of have to share the parenting duties a little more. So yeah, it's been a struggle. Yeah, ha- having a space that is, having this barn is so clutch. I am very, very lucky Yeah, because I have a separate space, but it also is like I can just walk down here. Well, I know? thought about giving it up last year and boy, I'm mm. glad I didn't do that. That would have been, yeah. I would have been going to a hotel to work or something. Yeah, but then, and then I, you know, after he's done with his homework and goes up for lunch, then I've got a few hours in the afternoon and then we do our weight training at uh, 4.30 most days that last for an hour, hour and a half. And then after that, every day of the week, the kids have some kind of activity that I take them to. And they're still going to. We're practicing social distancing at. So we've got like a ninja warrior thing. We, uh, we've got a band practice. We've got a code ninjas thing. So four days out of the week, they're doing that. So literally like my work day, quote unquote work day, I probably have four hours if I'm lucky four or five hours. Yeah. So then I end up working at night and then I'm just tired, right? Because all this stuff, all this stuff is going on. I, I also am, am curious to hear from Ransom to see what he has to say about this. So what it, what has it been like for you, Ransom? You work at a, a decent sized company. What has changed for you in 2020 and what's going on? So what's it been like a week since COVID started? <laughs> it's something like that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm an introvert, so it shouldn't be too bad, but yeah, no, it's uh, I don't, I've one observation I've had is that everyone in our field, our like kind of programmer technical field has been incredibly overutilized right now. Yeah. I don't think I've talked to anyone who has been like, oh yeah, I've got so much time. Everyone is just swamped. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no matter who you are. And if you're not, you should talk to me because I can fix that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's totally uh, true. But it kind of started off no one really knew what was going to happen. I think everyone right. kind of felt that way. I mean, I don't think anyone expected it to be to go this direction, to be like everyone just really wants to focus on technology right now because mm-hmm. it's it just can keep going. Everything that was physical has become virtual. So yep. it's a good place to be, but it's also very stressful because you don't want to turn down any opportunities as best you can. But at the same time, it's really easy to coming from someone who goes into the office traditionally and works at like eight to five or whatever it ends up being. You know, sometimes it goes late, but you don't really get that disconnect at the end of the day when you move, you transition into working from home. So it's just like, mm-hmm. I'll just find myself just working constantly, yep. you know? Yep. And it, sure, I'll take my laptop and unplug it and walk downstairs and eat some cereal or something. But then I open my laptop and I'm back writing code just casually. And you just, you know, I don't think you stop. I don't think 2020 has had given me a moment to like breathe at all. Isn't that weird? Because we talk, we hear about so much about the job losses and there are tons and tons of people yeah, that are losing their jobs. I feel really kind of guilty about it yeah. because I just, I just can't, I just don't see it, you know, yeah. in yeah. our yeah. 
Second. I have been feeling guilty just like telling people, oh, yeah, I got this kind of really cool, great job. And it's like, like I barely, you know, I've been keeping it hush hush because I just feel bad for people that well, I know it, who've it, lost jobs and are still trying to, to to make ends meet. It's just extremely lucky, but also mm-hmm. like, you want to be sort of empathetic to what other people are, are dealing with, too. And it's weird because it exposes flaws in business models that we never thought would ever have problems, right? Yeah. So I've, I've seen lots of companies, lots of people that work for companies that just have a business model that is so centered around people getting together in some way or another. And they're all just flatlined. Like they're all just totally screwed. And then on the other hand, a lot of the people that I know in the tech business are at risk of burning out from working too much yeah. because there's just so much work that's going on. It's crazy. John, how, how have things uh, been for you in terms of the stuff that you've been doing? You mean John or Jonathan? John, John. You. All right. So, uh, I, it's kind of, uh, I feel like I have a lucky pandemic story compared to most people, okay. at least on the outside. But you know, you I have I have the same stressors that you know everyone else is talking about. Like I just I feel burned out all the time. But I'll tell you my good did story you check, first. Did you check for lumps though? But before you get into your I good did. story, did I, you check I, for lumps? I, I did. I I honestly did. As Marion was telling her story, I'm like, you know, men get this too. So it's, it's true. Important to to do and to be aware of. And my, I've I, mentioned it before. I think my mother has her doctorate in nursing, and she was involved in oncology quite a bit. So I'm not even kidding everybody check you know what i mean yeah. doesn't doesn't take long totally. to check and to you're make not, sure it's not going podcast. on podcast do it right now yeah yeah uh, if you're listening yeah. to this podcast i want you to take place both of your hands on your breasts and check for lumps okay and then check your back for nipples and, and while you and while you're doing that listen to john's story unless you're driving <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell my my short version of the good part of the story which is all right you got married because the pandemic because uh my my boyfriend what do you mean because of the pandemic what do you mean because of the pandemic well, it, so so there's there there was baggage to this story but my boyfriend and I have been together for like 15 years and for the longest time it kind of felt like society or the government said you can't get married even if you want to so I kind of took that as a you know, I, I own that. And I'm like, well, I don't want your marriage that you could throw in at my face or throw in my face. So I always kind of we, we want myself. you to be as miserable as the rest of us, John, though, please. No, it's, <laughs> it's it, but I just like, you know, I found I found my peace and happiness and like, you know what, this is how we, we live our lives. But sure. so when, when gay marriage became a thing, you know, I had a lot of friends say, hey, are you guys getting married now? You've been together for so long. And we always said, no, we're happy. We're we've got a great relationship the way things have formed over time but yeah, COVID we don't need happened. your we don't need yeah. your official law yeah. or we don't need whatever to make ourselves happy yeah yeah so so but then COVID happened and you know andrew is my husband's name no. we're both practical people and we're like you know what it's if one of us gets sick and ends up in the hospital it's actually there are benefits to being married in this country that come with you know this marriage certificate like if i get sick i want him to have the ability to come see me in the hospital or make health right. decisions on my behalf and or vice power versa. or power so, of attorney right yeah so we're like you know what let's get married it, it, it's it, there's nothing wrong with it and, and we kind of like dove into it and we're we have now been cohabitating <laughs> you know, for a whole year and we're not pulling each other's hair out or it's gone great. So that's my good part of the COVID story. The other, the other good part of it is I just get to spend more time with him. So that's, Mm -hmm. so that's all the good part. I guess the bad part is I feeling burned out with the volume of work I have to do just like other people in here have talked about. Like right before I thought I was going to have a like kind of a free day today, you know, I'm like, oh, I'm going to be on the podcast with everybody. This is going to be cool. But of course the emails have hit right before recording time and so just the level of stuff to do after just piles up and it feels like it bleeds into the weekends all the time so there's there's a lot of that but that feels like a lucky problem that you're not supposed to complain about to anyone Isn't outside that weird though yeah yeah the inversion is just so weird because there's so many people that are out jobs that apparently December 31st is the cutoff where the anti-eviction thing runs out right so at the oh, end of the yeah. year is a lot of people could end up getting evicted because they have no no money, no job, no nothing. And a lot of people that I know are are actually they're like overstressed because they're they're doing too much work. Like it's a really yeah. crazy, unhealthy, strange situation that's going on. You know? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, work wise, we're uh, 
I say we, I have a business partner also named John. So you know, I have to keep the number of names in my life to a minimum, Andrew. <laughs> yeah, what um, is going on? Are you, do you only, are you only friends with people named like John and Andrew and anyone else? You're just like, no, I'm not talking to you. That's pretty much, that's why I text you every morning because you know, okay. you're on the group list. One do you really have Andrews. a business partner or is it just a mirror and it's like a Lord of the Rings golem type of situation? <laughs> now, his, name, his name is John Magner and our company's na- name is JMX2. So uh-huh. when people call, they just ask for John and whoever gets the call or the email answers it and everybody's happy so it's uh i i always assume you were texting me by mistake like i always assumed you're like oh it was meant for the other andrew but uh well this one this guy will do you know yeah so uh (laughs) i feel like you buried the lead there john that you you got married okay great but you started living together you cohabiting that's a huge thing yeah no well so that's the uh, the other lucky part of my pandemic story is andrew and i we got a country house about two years ago as a way to get out of New York City because that's where we we live. But we kind of wondered if we would actually get enough use out of this country house up in mm. Northwest Connecticut. And I've been here since like February 26th or something, you know, and I'm basically moving here I'm because I love being out here in the in the countryside. But we also signed our leases in New York City. Like, I, so I'm, I'm paying for my two-year lease uh, in New York currently. Andrew also has a two-year or a one-year lease in New York as well. So we're we're still paying for three different homes oh my God. while oh my going God. through this. Yeah, two of which are in New York City. Yes, and we've yes. <laughs> Oh, God. No wonder you've got so much work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So like it's got, we got bills to pay. So and uh, and and the last bit, just because, you know, everyone's sh- sharing all their their horror stories is one of my like bad things in life is I, I suffer from chronic migraines. And because of the pandemic, I think they're getting worse just because of the amount of stress of just everything. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. but, you know, it's. Every day is a new adventure. And uh, I personally think the migraines are because you're in the advertising business, John. Well, see, I don't consider myself in advertising anymore, although my clients are advertising Mm. companies. So, well, you know, you're an enabler. You're an enabler. I'm an enabler. (laughs) Right. Okay. That's fine. (laughs) So, I I used to consider myself in advertising when I was like a creative director in agency life. So, has anyone considered major changes to their life or the way that they're doing things as a result of this whole pandemic thing that's been going on. So I know like a lot of people have been reconsidering some things that they used to do. It's weird, like even though I have had plenty of work to do, and actually let me let me rewind. So I have been famously wrong about so many things in my life. It's ridiculous, like pretty decent sized things. Like I was involved in doing some of the first iOS applications and games. And I'm like, who would ever want to play games on their phone? Like it'll drain their battery. No one is ever going to play. They, they, they'll only ever want to play simple games. And that's what I focused on, which was totally wrong, totally wrong. And we were also we were working with these guys that were working on some project in this thing called Mono. And it, they, they called it Unity. And I'm like, eh, that's, that's never going to be a big thing. You know, whatever. Passed on that. So in a similar way, I was talking to Brandon Kelly and some of the other people at Pixel and Tonic earlier this year about the pandemic. And I was like, I am prepared for a 50 percent haircut in terms of revenue from all the work that I do. 100% totally wrong. <laughs> like I'm massively wrong. In fact, there's more work than I than I could handle. Like I'm like a lot of people here, like I'm saying no to stuff because it's just, it's too much, you know? So, you know, th- this is stuff that I got absolutely famously wrong. And I've also been considering changing stuff in terms of how my life works. You know, it, it's been forced to change during the pandemic. But then after the pandemic, like I've saved a lot of money because there's a lot of stuff that I used to do that I don't do anymore. Some of it I miss, but there are other things. I'm just like, ah, you know, did, did I really need that? Has anyone else experienced something like that? They, they have changed something. Maybe they've started exercising or they stopped doing something. Earl, we know you're you're, you're drinking and lifting, but has anyone else <laughs> changed anything, anything major? Based on Earl, I'm going to get a pommel horse, actually. Ooh, that, that's oh, pretty genius. sweet, yeah, actually. Keep me, keep me posted. I, I'm, it's on my wish list. <laughs> God, can you imagine doing drunken pommel horse? Oh my God! Well, you can you can doing a pommel horse. I mean, you'd probably only be able to do it once, and then you know you'd end up killing yourself, <laughs> break your neck. Yeah. What about you, Patrick? Has anything changed, or are you thinking about changing anything that you do in your life as a result of being forced to change, and you know stuff that you maybe are going to keep? Not really. No, I mean, I've, 
No, no, I'm just, I, I want things to go back to the way they were. I, I, I can see, it's funny, just talking about masks and the importance. I could, see, I, I hope there's great emphasis on public health after this. Mm. Uh, I can see myself, you know, especially when I have a cough or a cold or whatever, putting on a mask, even after this is hopefully someday all behind us. Just to think about, you know, I think we've all been thinking so much about touching surfaces and how we breathe and how we droplets and aerosols and all that. And used to see people typically of Asian descent that would wear a mask on public transportation or whatnot. I think that is a change that I'd like for my family, at least, to be making that if you don't feel well, throw on a mask and protect the people around you. Otherwise, yeah, I mean, I, I think I said I bought a treadmill. I'm trying to get healthier, just being stuck in the house, at least keep moving and be active. Yeah. So if you want to go back to the way things were, Patrick, so you want to just be able to go back to hanging clothes on your on your treadmill? Is that what that's you're saying? Right. That's right. Yep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, you're right. So I, when I, I used to travel quite a bit, and I remember going to Japan a number of times and seeing people wearing masks, and it was a weird thing for me because I'm just like, this is weird. Like, why why are they are they germ phobes? Like, what's going on? And they're like, no, like they're they're being courteous. They're sick. They don't want anyone else to get sick. I'm like, well, that makes complete sense. Like, why the why the hell aren't we doing that? <laughs> you know? And this was like 20 years ago. So it's just a it's just a thing that's been there for a while and then you get people here who's like, I, ain't, I ain't wearing no mask you ain't telling me what to do like, all right thanks thanks asshole you know <laughs> what I, what about you paulo is anything uh you thinking about making any changes based on what's going on other than maybe like immediately finding some office space that you can actually retreat to i mean that's it's funny because before leaving san francisco you know, i would go into an office almost every day and when i moved back down here to southern california i was working remotely i would like try to find excuses to work from a coffee shop or mm. just get out of the house um, and that's with my my toddler who was actually in preschool. <laughs> you know, she wasn't in the house. So now we have two kids in, in the house and driving my wife insane, so tra- helping out more during the day and trying to find time at night to catch up. One of the biggest changes we're actually thinking about making is either buying some sort of getaway house or leaving California. So it's that's the, sort of the biggest. Um, Man, I wish Ryan Ireland was on here and could talk to us all about go bags. <laughs> With all of his money, (laughs) his bug out bag packed and ready to go, you know? Yeah. Jenny, are you thinking about making a change? Like, uh, first of all, maybe getting a a go bag and then, I don't know, maybe moving out of New York City, moving somewhere else? What do you think, Jen? Oh, yeah. I mean, I grew up in Victoria, BC, so I have been used to having more space. And New York City is really appealing because there's tons of things to do and it's a cultural hub. And since yeah. COVID started, all of those things have disappeared. And since I work totally remotely and from home since 2012. You know, I could really just live anywhere. So yeah, it's definitely been on my mind to go somewhere where I can just be in nature. And it's the, the plans are in the works, but I'm not sure when it's going to happen because, I mean, traveling is difficult now anyway. Moving is difficult. But I'm, I'm hoping that the trend of people working from home and conducting business online will continue. It certainly seems to. I've mm. definitely I've definitely seen companies that I work for who demand in-person meetings. Well, they've stopped that. And I think that they will continue to stop that. So I think it'll be more efficient and more fun. Like I don't have to travel anywhere. I can just do things online that don't need to be done, that don't need to be done in person, thus saving, you know, the in-person contact that I have for things that I actually really want to do, such as getting together with friends. So I'm hoping that the companies that have been forced to go online and digitize things will understand that, you know, it's actually, it's fine and people are just as productive and maybe maybe they're even happier. Like my brother who lives in Connecticut would commute to New York for one and a half hours a day. Now he's at home, he's spending time with his kids, he's happy. And I don't think that they've had that much difficulty at his work. So I'm hoping that this change will continue and people will commute less and just generally be happier. This certainly helped me for sure. Because you used to live, at, what was it like Colombia or Argentina or somewhere in South America, Chicago, right? Yeah. yeah. Wait, where was it? I'm sorry. Ah, okay. Yeah. 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 So, and, you know, so that option is open to anyone that's listening. What really is kind of holding it back right now is this global pandemic thing. Because cities have been went to the u.s virgin islands she's peace i'm going and now she's just living there for now <laughs> until the pandemic is over which island u.s virgin islands i i don't know exactly probably st thomas probably yeah. Yeah. yeah this actually is a good segue so earl what is woofing and how does that relate to going to hawaii <laughs> uh yeah so a, a friend of mine uh woofing is short for uh willing workers on organic farms and uh, i thought that was something that furries did or something the woofing no? yeah well i mean i think it's also that but in this okay. Specific context. It's uh, yeah, a friend of mine decided who, who had been living in New York for the last few years and had done some woofing in her college days to just drop a 
smoke bomb and go to Hawaii to do some woofing to ride out this winter's quarantine, which has got to be the best decision probably any of my friends have made historically in any yeah. context, probably. Yeah. So super proud of her. She's do I mean, she's doing cool work, you know, working on an organic coffee farm and stuff. And then also just hiking in Hawaii and just living in a tent. And I'm deeply jealous. This isn't one of those coffee farms where they have that weird Kopi Lawak coffee, is it? I'm not sure. Is that the is that the uh, the monkey poop one? <laughs> no, it's not not monkeys. So there's they, some people call it cat poop coffee, but the they're actually civets. They're like a kind of a weasel kind of thing. Okay. And they what would happen is and this is uh, in mostly in Indonesia, but they eat the berries, right? Right. And they would poop them out, and then the the beans would be left over in the poop. And I don't know how it happened, but someone like collected it and was just like, you know what? I bet we could sell this to a bunch of really stupid tourists. Right? So they, they got the Kopi Luwak together and they sell it. And it's some of the most expensive coffee that you can buy in the world. That's ridiculous. Yeah, I like that it, it, as Earl recognized what you're talking about, you said, oh, no, it's not that. Not meaning that, no, it's not poop berries, but no, it's a different kind of animal that consumes and poops the berries in typical Andrew fashion. Like, right. I, yeah, I wasn't wrong about the poop. Oh, it no, you're bad. all wrong about yeah. this. Yeah. <laughs> Monkey poop. Yeah. It's weird. Sorry. 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 Well, it's right. a really it's a really specific kind so kopi is coffee and luwak is the civet is the animal right so it's literally the kopi luwak I, and i've i've had it before and it is it's a little musky but it's definitely definitely not worth the money you know that um, has to be true <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's all, it's all, unfortunately, it's all very true. That, that'll probably be a scenario for an upcoming dev mode episode. So if you were, you know, steeping a, a hot cup of Kopi Luwak coffee. Anyway. Or more likely collecting the beans. Oh, collecting the beans. That's right. Yeah, that's, oh that God. sounds like a much more fraught position to be in than merely making coffee. And they've all got all sorts of weird stuff too. There's like a, a panda, panda poop tea, I think. Where they, they feed the pandas some kind of... I swear to God. Yeah. I swear to God. And if, this, and if we've learned nothing from the economic meltdown of this pandemic, it's that the folks who are profiting most off of the poop coffee are not the folks who are out there collecting the beans. Oh, yeah. No. I mean, for sure that that's true. It really is such a weird inversion, I think, because... <sighs> Again, you know, I'm, I'm stating the obvious, but so many people have lost their jobs. And, and but so many of us are fortunate enough that we have more work that we can handle. But we all have to live together in a society somehow. So how the hell is that going to work? Well, Earl. Yeah, I was. I mean, yeah, if you're waiting for the communists to jump in, I'm happy to do yes. it. Uh, <laughs> so, well, the thing that was, is, that was like, Earl, Earl, that was like you, commie. Yeah, mean, yeah, no, I'm here. I, here I am. You're, I'm happy. To, I saw the apocalypse stuff. I'm happy to be here. Good. So, well, so for I mean, even though some of us work for ourselves or are part of companies that we own or even other companies, we're all still effectively compared to somebody like Bezos or Elon Musk or something like that. We're all working class. We yep. may be doing better than other folks in this situation. But if if nothing else from this pandemic, we've the, the gross inequalities uh, in income and the idea that, I mean, I just saw a number the other day that something like between March and, and this month, the wealthiest wealth has increased by uh, like several hundred billion dollars, you just can't work for that much money. You don't earn that much money. You can only really steal that much money. And so there needs to be, you know, ta taxation policy needs to change because the thing is, is that if folks, if the eviction moratorium runs up at the end of this month and 20, 30 million people get evicted, there's nobody to move into those places. So like, yep. what's the point of even owning that property as an investment property? You know what I mean? It's just, yeah. what's the point of being wealthy to the point that you can have a bunch of empty buildings, right? So really, Realistically, taxing the ultra wealthy, and I'm talking about the ultra wealthy, and the, and progressive taxation is something a lot of people don't understand, right? When you hear, oh, if you make more than ten million dollars, they tax you at ninety percent. It's not ninety percent of ten million dollars. It's ninety percent after ten million dollars, right? right? So if you make exactly. ten million dollars and your tax rate's forty percent, whatever, as soon as you make, if you make ten thousand and one dollar, ninety cents of that that next dollar goes to, you know what I mean? And so, I mean, that's my, you know, the overall analysis here is that there's plenty of money to keep folks fed and housed. It's just in, it's not in the hands of the community, right? Because on the base, on the base level, taxation is a democratic way to manage the wealth that a community produces, right? That's all it is, really. And so right now, what we have is this tremendous amount of wealth in the hands of a few people who, going back to the coffee analogy, aren't the ones out there picking beans, right? Oh, I and, thought you were going to tell me they're the ones pooping it out. <laughs> no, no. Well, I mean, yeah, I'm sure. I mean, who knows what's going on in Bezos's dungeon lair, you know? But and you, So this is interesting, Earl, though. So you mentioned Jeff Bezos. And yeah, we've seen like the amount of money that Amazon has made is just absolutely obscene. But the, one of the things, the most interesting story that I think has came out of this is his wife, Mackenzie, right? They got a divorce. So she walked away with an incredible 
incredible amount of money. She is doing the most reverse gold digger thing that I've ever seen in my wife and I'm uh, in my life. And I'm not implying. My <laughs> Isn't that a good one? Flip. That? Flip. Yeah. Um, well, I'm looking at the story that says his ex-wife. Anyway, so the <laughs> <laughs> that is, I'm totally leaving it in because that was a great one. So what she's doing, and I'm not, in no way implying that she was a gold digger at all. Like she was with him from the beginning. Like none of this stuff is going on, right? So, but whatever. She took. Four billion dollars. Like that is just such an astronomical amount of money. And she's giving away four billion dollars in four months. Is she's actually already given it away to people to help people in the pandemic. And I'm just like, you know what? This one individual has done more than our government has to help and people. Yeah, that's cool. What's so great about it too is she if you look at the recipients of that. $4 billion mm-hmm. gift. It's not like she's giving all this money to the computer science department at Stanford and Harvard right. gets this much. Right. She she gave it to right. like community colleges. So, I mean, yep. this is making a real difference in the life of real people. Yeah. And, and shelters and food and you know, all that kind of stuff. But it was just, I thought it was hilarious because, you know, she walks away from the marriage with, with all this money and she's just like, you know what? Hey, Jeff, all that money. Thanks. But I'm giving it all away. You know, I think that's awesome. Yeah, I really like the the idea that like maybe she was like Robin Hood, Robin Hooding Jeff Bezos, yes. right? Like right. she yeah. was like she maybe she was a gold digger, but because she wants to play Robin Hood, not because oh. she wanted to buy ridiculous shoes or something. Okay, so that that would make a great plot, like if that were true, like there that would be an awesome movie plot. But no, she was with him from the beginning. Like none none of that was in play. Oh yeah, no, I just I don't know. I just thought it was funny. But how that you're right though. That would be pretty cool she if is. someone married someone else with the express purpose of. <laughs> like taking up their money and watch making them watch them give it away like that's hilarious <laughs> <laughs> she can probably still afford nice shoes though I know, oh, yeah, I'm I sure know, she'll, but sure she'll be fine. Yeah, no one, is, no one is implying that she's going to go hungry as a result of doing this. But you got to admit, like, it's still a pretty cool thing to do, don't yeah, you think, Mary? That is very cool. That is very cool. Yeah, and I think she shouldn't she live up in your area too? She lives up there somewhere, I think. I don't know. I, this is the first I've heard of it. I know I some of that uh, that money made it here locally, Andrew. She gave a chunk to the Rochester United Way, and so it's it's getting spread all over the place. Places you know I wouldn't expect, like Jonathan wow. mentioned. Yeah. Wow. Wow, that's that's really cool. That's really cool. What do you think, Jennifer? What do I think about? What do you think about Earl's Communist Manifesto? Hey, hey, I didn't. I would never. I oh, I've yeah. never written a book. I will never write a book. How dare you? <laughs> I'm gonna plead the fifth on this one. Okay, no, but on anything. Like, what do, what do you think about her giving away like four billion dollars in four months? I think that's admirable. I would hope that I'd be the type of person if I had four billion dollars that I would find efficient ways to give it away to people who need yeah. it more than I do. So I certainly don't need it. Because what are you going to do with $4 billion? Like, no realistically, what, that what would you do with $4 billion? PlayStation what 5? What would you do? Way. There's way smarter people than I am who would be able to do stuff with that amount of money. I think I would squander it if I didn't give right. it to somebody smart. You would have such a hard time squandering $4 billion. <laughs> <laughs> like, literally... <laughs> Wasn't there a movie where someone had to give away a certain amount of money in a certain amount of time and it was actually hard for them to do? Brewster's Millions. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Richard Pryor. It's just such an insane amount of money. Like, I don't think any of us can even comprehend what it would take to actually get rid of that. You, you could buy as many yachts as you wanted and still have billions left. No, no, you'd, you'd, yeah. say, you'd say, I want a colony on Mars. Yeah, yeah. Like there that. you go. And there, yeah. there it would go. And I don't know. Yeah, the, it, the illustration of like how long it takes to earn, to, to, to accumulate that much money, right? It would take, if you earned $100,000 a year straight and didn't pay taxes, it takes 10,000 years to make a billion dollars. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's like when you, when you think about things because we hear these terms all the time a billion you know this and that whatever and they just become things that you hear on tv and stuff but when you actually think about how long it would take to accumulate that much money you're like oh yeah that is a ton of money holy crap in in juxtaposition to her husband is very interesting i mean because he has proven to be a lot less charitable than a lot of people thought (laughs) He also did not sign the giving pledge, which is the pledge that was, this was started by Bill Gates and Warren Buffett. And basically they're saying, we're going to pledge to give away the majority of our wealth for the end of our lifetime to charity. Bezos won't have any part of that. So I don't know, Ebenezer Bezos, I guess. Well, what I was going to say was Earl, 10,000 years 
to earn a billion dollars if you're making 100 grand a year and pay no taxes on it. I, I don't care how often you hit your love rings, Earl. You're not going to live no 10,000 years. So you're not. Oh, yeah, for it's, sure. It's, yeah. Just, it's just an illustration here to help sort of. It's like one of those visualizations, like when people have trouble understanding the size and scope of things in the universe, and you start as the Earth, and then they show you how big Jupiter is, and then they show you how big the Sun is, and then they show you know, how big Beetlejuice yeah. is. And it's like, oh my God, that's these scales that we're talking about are unimaginable to like most people on, uh, without some kind of illustration. And speaking of scales that are unimaginable. Jenabelle, you had a pro tip in our little chat. Would you like to give that to all the listeners? Yeah, sure. Well, we were talking about checking your breasts for lumps, and I just noted that your guy, you should probably check your balls too. Yeah, 100%. Like for real. tip. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Right. No, no. I mean, I know it sounds funny to say, but it's definitely true. Like you, you should check these things, and you should get your colonoscopy and do do all that kind of fun stuff that you that you need to do. You know. Yep. Well, now that we have <laughs> <laughs> now that we have transitioned to balls, that about wraps it up for another episode of the DevMode.fm podcast. If you enjoy the show, make sure you subscribe, check your balls, check your breasts, tell a friend, and drop us a review. We would really appreciate it. For the DevMode.fm podcast, I'm Andrew Welch. I'm Patrick Harrington. I'm Jennifer Bloomberg. I'm, I'm Jonathan Mar- Melville. I'm Marion Nullivan. And I want to thank Paulo, Ransom, John uh, for coming on. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, thanks. Thank you. I forgot to give you a sign off, Earl. That's okay. It's probably better off if people don't know I was here. Yeah, well, I didn't. I didn't want you to be <laughs> with all that commie, with all that commie shit at the end. Sorry, <laughs> I, I, I didn't want you to be giving your your sign off while you're checking your balls. Anyway, probably yeah. sound weird. That's okay. okay. I was. I was busy. I watched like old episodes of Seinfeld, and I got to the one where Elaine realize, or they realize Elaine's dating a communist, and he he always wears drab clothing and reads the the Weekly Worker or whatever. And I, I was going to bring up your communism, but I, I thought oh, I'm not going to make it, you know. But yeah, it, it became a major focal point for the show. That's what I yeah I don't remember. I haven't rewatched <laughs> Seinfeld in a long time. Kramer uh, became a communist too, I think. Right? He can. Well, this shows you. This shows you our mentality. So ransom is like. Let's talk more about Bezos, like an interesting issue. And we're like, nah, we're going to talk about balls. <laughs> yeah, you know, let's just, let's, we got to end the, again, the episode's got to end somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I wanted to bring up the, uh...